So I have to do a little cleanup around here. I just had to look this up again to make sure I was right. Um, Gibson owns Kramer, Epiphone, Steinberger, KRK, and Mesa Boogie. And the reason why I wanted to look it up was because I just noticed that the screws, taking the screws out of the back plate, I noticed there's no, they don't have the plastic um, protector underneath this plate. Like some of the other ones that I've received have. So we're going to have to move this a little bit. Get some of these strings out of here. Since I've cut them off. Oops. We don't want anything making scratches there. Get this final one out again. And uh, like most of them, the neck screws are biting into the body. And sometimes I get different size screws. Oh, they all seem to be the same. Move my other glasses. Let's see how the neck pocket comes apart. Hmm, snug fit. Very nice. Oh, yes. Snug fit. Except for I've got some paper stuck on that corner. And that's all raised up, so I'll have to smooth that off. This will be drilled out. This is a basswood body. I can tell just by the grain. Uh, no, it's supposed to be mahogany. Yes, this is a mahogany body. The basswood feels a little bit like this, but it's usually a little bit more uh, porous. So those will have to be drilled out. This will have to be flattened off, and I'll do that with a chisel. I mean, it's not so nice when you get these pips that come up like that. I mean, that's going to be a problem when you screw it back in, so you just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Let me get this little china sticker off of there. Uh, just like the ones on the back of the neck that were up here left some residue. Um, strong adhesive, weak paper. So the body will move to the other bench. So it's a Gibson company and they're making a Fender style guitar. It has the fender scale. All right, that is flat. The headstock is also very much like a shape of a fender with the uh, head back. Un unlike the uh, the Ibanez that has the canted back headstock but has a scarf joint there. It's a nice one piece, you know. There's nice figuring in this piece of maple. Be 
before they put that satin finish on there, they had it just touched it with uh, a, um, a little bit of a very light tint of some kind. It would have brought all that figuring out much more vivid. It would have probably looked a little bit nicer. But that would have taken a little bit more work. None of the fret ends are uh, out of the wood. So it's just going to be straight, checking it out with the uh, rocker and marking them up. So I have already done a cursory and number two turns out to be flipping really big. Oh, except for there. <laughs> it's rocking really heavy there. And number four is doing the same thing. Um, and one, two, three, four, so I can't use four. Okay, those three are okay. Well, at least that one is. And that's all right. Oh, a little, little something on the edge there. A tiny little bit. Okay there. No, nope, no good there. That's the 11 one that was choking out my E string. It's really high there. And this end as well. Yeah, so the, the 11 is high on both ends. Uh, something there. So, looks like it's going to be a tape job. Although up here, I think I found that... Oh yeah, there's one there. Up here it hasn't been... Oh, shit. I think the last few were okay. Yeah, last few are okay. Okay, so I'm going to have to tape it up and uh, go through them, fix the ones that need fixing, then check the ones with those and the other ones again and do the whole thing. So that's going to be a time-consuming job, which I'm not going to uh, video uh, again. So here we are. On the first pass, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that need to be touched before I can check the ones around them out of 21 frets. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay. Whew. I'm going to try to do the spot as opposed to doing the whole leveling this time just to see how that goes and uh, I'll work it down right to the end so first filing 17 of 21 that's four short so after I went over each one of them with the manual file I took my leveler where I have my 220 stuck to the bottom of this. I just went back and forth over it to make sure that they were all even and smooth. So basically every fret ended up getting touched because of that. So now it's an entire fretboard crowning uh, that we have to do and a polishing up to the final uh, uh, level. And here we are at the polished level. Let's hope it plays like butter. Now if this works right this time, it should all come off in a strip that. 
Nice and easy. Oh, that one let go. Guess it wasn't long enough. But it's better. Okay. It's looking nice. It's looking very nice. Now those edges are nice now. Nice and Nice and soft. Now the wood edges could be rolled a little bit more. Which is not hard to do. But overall, wow, feels great. I've made a decision about these uh, tuners because they move side to side like that because of the way they're designed where they clip in. I've ordered another set that does not uh, work that way uh, and this button is all part of the one shaft that does not come apart. So I've ordered a set made by Metalore and uh, they have the shaft which is uh, got a, a plastic bushing that goes in. It's not all metal on metal like these ones are and the button actually goes on like a standard tuner with a screw in the top so they will be in tomorrow and then I will be able to uh, see whether they're better with so I'm gonna leave that on this bench and let's go to the other bench and take a look under the hood and see what we find Quite a, quite a thick single ply. All right, this should lift. And we should be able to see what's under there. Oh, it's a rat's nest. <laughs> Look at that. Not even a tie wrap on anything. Hmm. So, Kramer Gibson, look at the uh, look at the inside of the body. You know they did the routing. It was really left rough. All the all the edges, the singed edges, are just there, and then, and then they went and painted over the top of them and left all of that stuff in here. That's, uh, you know, an indicator of uh, of your quality level when you see workmanship like that. And they got the screws coming through the body from the claw into this cavity. And so you've got humbucker, single, single. And realistically, they could have just made the swimming pool uh, so you could put anything. All right. What have we got? We've got, yes, the El Chibo Mundo box switch. And I bet you anything, I may have the problem of, uh, I don't have a switch handy, of uh, not being as deep as I, I, I would like it to be. So it's got a single chiclet. Is it a 47? Unmarked. Unmarked chiclet, but it's green. The green ones in this size are usually 47s. Okay, so we got pot, pot, pot. Mm. 
Yeah, these are all two wire pickups. Uh, none of them are splittable. This is quite a strong uh, humbucker here. Let's take a look at uh, what the um, the number could be for the value of these pots. Uh, it should be at least uh, 200. It's going to have to be at least 2,000. Let's see what these are. Yep, that's a 237. So this one will be the same. And uh, it's reading zero. Uh, let's go to the middle. Still reading zero. I think it's going. Uh, it's going through the pickup. And that's going to give me a problem. Yeah, that's going through the pickup. <coughs> But I expect it's going to be the same. All right, so not a lot of surprise under this hood. Even the base was left pretty, uh, pretty rough. Like the neck pocket is is sanded smooth, but whatever they're using for routing, it's they left it really rough down here, and. Uh, all the sharp edges are there as well. For mahogany, it's quite light. They said it's mahogany. Metal tops. Let's see if we can get them off without pulling the shaft. Yeah, it's coming. Probably a plastic on the inside. So the very common ones. Yeah, there's a... Well, it's harder than the standard plastic. It's the black one. That's in there. Got some weight to it. Not bad. I think that's about the best part on the whole guitar. have to be dismantled and uh, transfer these to the they said these are uh, Alnico but you know they they're not constructed like an Alnico uh, I'm a little bit curious now let's see does this come off like most of them do Can I do that? Won't oh, cut my hand open. <laughs> Can I get that? Can I get that? You've got it press fit together there, and it's quite light. That's a pretty good pull. I'm sure that they're relatively the lower end of an Alnico if it is. I think I see a bar magnet in there. I'll take a look at my schematics that I already have. I think I've already done two volumes and a master tone on the um, Harley Benton. Alright, we're going to leave this here for now and I've got to go look at some order parts. My uh, new uh, set of tuners haven't shown up yet, but I'm going to remove these so that when they show up, 
I will be able to uh, lube them and put them on. And if I tell you what I really think, I think they suck really bad as a design. Suck really bad as a design. I thought I had a mini bottle of this down here. Well, it got the goo off. It uh, got some other stuff off too. Okay, that's fully dry. Yeah, that's okay. Let's shake up the little bottle of the Dario detailer. Alright, well the rest of it's pretty good. Is there something else I needed to do? Yeah, oh yeah. I wanted to uh, clean up a little bit of the grime. <clears throat> Oops. A bull in a china shop here. Nice. Okay. I'll just uh, see what I can do with the front of this headstock now. Yeah, nice jobby. Okay. Look what just showed up. Did we get lucky today or? not. This is recyclable. Did we get lucky or not? Exhibit A. Well, it doesn't come off as easy as the other ones did. It rattles though. Maybe we'll just have to, yeah, let's pop it out like that. Okay. Okay, come on. Sun on the beach. Look at that. Hopefully that's just a loose screw. There's quite a play on that which is going to create a problem with uh, stability and tuning. But this part's a piece of shit. Let me try something before I send this back. I'm going to get the other parts. Try not to get these mixed up. So these shafts sit nice and tight, but these things are crap. Look at that, it's it's the opposite of each other. Alright, let's try let's try this.
Maybe I can make good parts between the two. Lose that little spring washer. So this one actually has the the one D only. All right. So I, this is where I I thought I needed a third hand before. No, it still doesn't work. Oh crap! The plate is too thin. The thicknesses of the base plate are different. This one has a good base plate. This one has a good mounting. Uh, too thin a base plate. So even with the spring washer, it doesn't fit properly. Well, that's crap. That's going to go back. So there. Do not buy the metal or replacement parts. No good. It goes back. I'm just going to put their sticker over the top of mine. Tape this up with some tape, and it's a goner.